We are very involved in the research of uh, the sun, especially the solar activity. And what we are interested in is modeling of the solar flares, which are sudden brightenings on the sun and coronal mass ejections, which are the major solar storm, the solar eruptions. And what our group here at the University of Michigan is doing, we are trying to simulate these solar eruptions and their impacts on the uh, Earth system and on our technological systems. As you can see, the sun is very active. We are approaching solar maximum. Solar maximum is about a year from now, in the spring of 2013. Around solar maximum, we have about one major storm a month. And that means that uh, some kind of uh, preventive action needs to be taken. You can see that uh, we are simulating a two-dimensional cut through a coronal mass ejection. The simulation shows how the coronal mass ejection impacts Earth. The biggest solar storm in recorded history actually happened in 1859. It's named after Richard Carrington, who was a royal astronomer in Britain and who basically observed the first solar flare. If a Carrington time event would happen today, we could pretty much lose the North American power grid. The major economic impact would not come directly from the solar storm itself, but from the replacement time. And some estimates are in the trillions of dollars of uh, lost economic activity. The satellite companies can take several actions. First of all, they can put their spacecraft in so-called safe mode, uh, which means that uh, the load on the instruments is reduced and therefore the probability of damage is also reduced. Or they can completely turn off a satellite for a while and uh, that's very costly but still much cheaper than uh, losing a satellite. And uh, in major space storms, uh, companies did lose some uh, satellites. Our group here at the University of Michigan is probably the world leader in simulating these space weather events. And uh, the goal is to be able to forecast like a day or two ahead, just like we forecast regular tropospheric weather. We are at the very beginning of the road. The simulations are getting better and better, but our forecast capability is a couple of hours at most right now. The goal is to extend it up to five days, but it's a lifetime of work.